got a set of rules that he knows by day to day. And if you ask for his advice, he'll pour the language. In the word, if it's a fence, mend it. If it's a dollar bill, spend it. Before it burns a hole down in your jeans. If it's a load, truck it. If it's a punch, duck it. If she's a lady, then treat her like a queen. <laughs> Cowboys, I think you sympathize with the values of the Cowboys because you've had to watch all those Western movies all these years, right? <laughs> In fact, I saw a, a statistic that of all the movies ever made, 25% of them have been Cowboy movies. So, so everybody knows Cowboys, even in Japan and in Korea. And they've even heard of them in New York City, where I was last week, talking about Cowboy movies. But it's common sense, and I think what we need to do in the river is to get back to the basics. You know, what's really important in the river is the floods. It's my goal that we're going to, to strengthen and support the club. We're also going to increase and focus humanitarian service. And we're going to enhance public image and awareness. Those are the three priorities of the new strategic plan. And it isn't important that you know the plan, but it is important that you know. What? <laughs> Those cowboys just keep showing up. So it is important that we strengthen the clubs, and that's why I like to come to meetings like this. You know, occasionally I'm asked, how did you get to be Rotary president? Well, you see, I was a Rotary scholar, as was Ray Wynn. I was a Rotary Scholar way back in 1961. And when I returned to my little town of Unionville, Missouri, big town of 2,000 people, I was asked immediately to join my Rotary Club. Now, in a town of 2,000, you know everyone, and everyone knows you. Can't get away with much in those little towns. And the president of the Rotary Club came to invite me to be a Rotary two weeks after I returned from my year as a scholar. Not only was he the president of the Rotary Club, he was my dentist. <laughs> you know, the last person in the world you want mad at you is your dentist. <laughs> so I said yes, I would join Rotary, and I've been a Rotarian now for 50 years. And when people ask me, how did you become Rotary president, my response is, well, Woody Allen said, American movie producer, he said 80% of success is just showing up. I've been showing up for 50 years. I outlived all my competitors. That's how I became president. However I became president, I'm delighted to be here because I believe in Rover. I think what we do in our weekly meetings, coming together for fellowship and for friendship, or as young people prefer to say, networking, it's all the same thing, is important. And out of that comes community service. Because in our Rotary Clubs, we have the talent, and we have the resources to make our communities better places to live. Now, tonight I want to focus on the Rotary Foundation, because that's the thrust of this evening. You know, since I was a Rotary scholar, I really am a product of the Rotary Foundation, and I'm very proud of that. 
And you know how many others, like Rewa and myself, have been to Rotary's College? 45,000. Is that not a tremendous, absolutely tremendous success story for Rotary Foundation? Now, the scholarships were the very first program. 18 were given in 1948 a year after the death of Paul Harris. People sent money into the Rotary Foundation to honor the life of Paul Harris, and they had enough money to give 18 scholarships for study abroad. And you know what the standard of donation that the Rotary Foundation asked of Rotary Clubs in those days? If the club contributed $10 per person, cumulatively, they became a 100% club. That was considered to be the level of contributions that were needed to fund the Rotary Foundation. Stop and think about that. $10 per rotator. Wow. <laughs> Inflation has caused that to go up, has it not? What do you think my scholarship was worth in 1961? How much did it cost me? It cost the Rotary Foundation to send me to South Africa? $2,800, $2,800. Today, the value of the scholarships is $25,000. Now, it was obvious as the cost of the scholarships started going up that the Rotary Foundation could not survive on $10 per person, once in a lifetime, which is 100% club. So we started giving 200% clubs and 300% clubs if they were up to $30. And again, that wasn't producing the amount of money. So somebody in the late, in the middle 50s had this bright idea. Let's do what the Boy Scouts do. If you give so much money, you get an award. There's been this long association between Boy Scouts and Rotary, in not only in the United States, but around the world. And so we started the Paul Harris Fellowship that if a person gave $1,000 to the foundation, they would be designated as a Paul Harris Fellow. The first ones were available in 1957. And of course, there were none to begin with. The first one in my district, which was the St. Louis, Missouri district, was the district governor, who when he finished his year, Rotary sent him a reimbursement check for $1,000 that he hadn't expected to receive and so he said, I wasn't counting on this money, I'll just give it to the foundation. He became my first Paul Harris fellow. Now in our district, we have the Paul Harris Society, which is people that agree to give at least a thousand a year for the rest of their lives. And you know, in our district, we have seven Paul Harris societies. The cost of the foundation now, not the cost, I shouldn't say that. The amount of money we raise for the annual programs fund, which we spend three years later, we don't bankroll it, we spend it three years later, all of it, is a hundred, over a hundred million dollars. Think of that success story. 